All right, so friction. Friction always creates problems. It either makes problems more complicated or it's just not pretty at all. So what's the deal with friction? Say you have the typical box on the thing and you give it some velocity initial VO. Which way is friction going to point? That's the first problem. That's the first thing you want to ask yourself. So friction always opposes opposes um, your velocity. So in this case, velocity is going that way, friction is going to go this way, because friction doesn't like you. And uh, say for example, this box is going to go up, 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 and then it's going to stop here. But now you say, wait a minute, what if my VO is zero? How can this oppose zero? Well, now you have to worry about, think about it this way. If you were sitting up here, uh, you're going to have some uh, component of mg uh, going this way. So some component of mg, I don't know because I don't know my um, my theta, I really don't need it just to know the direction of f. Um, so some component of mg going this way. Well, in order to hold something up, just like as if you were sitting at the top of a hill, you could sit down on, you know, and do your homework or whatever it is you want to do, um, your force of friction is going to counteract that force. Why? Because this thing wants to stay at rest. So, in this case, you have force of friction counteracting and then immediately, as soon as it stops, it changes direction. So, once it starts, once it comes up, up here, your velocity equals zero. And then, it's going to come back down. But now, your velocity is now going to be this way, and I'm going to name it VF. So initially it was going this way, now it's moving this way. So again, it opposes velocity, therefore my force of friction is going to be the opposite, the, the opposite way. So now, what are some other little caveats of, of friction? Is that uh, energy, you know they've always stressed that energy is always conserved. Well energy is dissipated. I think I spelled that wrong, it doesn't matter, it's physics. Um, so, energy is dissipated. What does this mean? Energy is still conserved. Just that, say for example, you have, a, again, your, this, but say now this is made out of sandpaper. What do you do? You rub this, rub this, rub this, rub this, rub this, and if you touch the sandpaper right afterwards, what are you going to get? You're going to get some heat. You're going to get some heat coming up. Now that happens with friction. Friction either makes heat, or it does some type of transferring of energy into sound, like uh, if you're biking down and then you stop uh, pedaling, it's gonna go like that, that that your tire does. Well, that that sound is created by friction of the gears, you know, kicking each other, and that makes some sound, and your energy is dissipated in some way or another. So, um, energy is dissipated; it's just transformed into something else. But the thing is that you can no longer say, for example. Um, my kinetic energy, you know, one half uh, mv squared equals my potential energy because energy in this case, some of it goes into sound, some of it goes into heat. So you cannot say this. You 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 could say it equals plus some, you know, energy that was dissipated. So if in an example they give you that uh, you have this thing going up, and then. Um, it comes back down, so you did it with VO, and then by the time it came back down, it has a VO divided by two, because as it goes down, it slows down, it loses some energy to heat, and it comes back down and it continues losing some energy to heat, and when it gets to the exact same place, it has this. Well, this usually happens. It's kind of like um, something happens is if you get a ball and you throw it up, it goes back, goes back down, and then usually it doesn't do this. What happens is that it kind of does that. Why? Because some energy is dissipated, in this case, in um, changing the uh, geometry of the, of the ball. The point is there's some type of friction going on and some type of energy is dissipation. So what do you do here? Again, you remember that I told you that the um, initial energy that you have, so your initial energy is going to be in the form of... Um, kinetic energy because in this case I want to choose this to be h equals zero so my potential energy is zero. So one half mvo squared is going to equal 
what the MVO squared but since it's negative it really doesn't matter because I'm kind of squaring it so I'm just going to give it the same thing M and then it's going to be VO over 2 this squared plus whatever energy was dissipated because this is the conservation of energy law right it, it always maintains the, uh, the total energy at the beginning always equals the total energy at the end but in this case it was dissipated into heat so now we want to we want to calculate this so this I'm going to go ahead and erase this this turns into one half MVO squared equals this is going to turn into a one over four times this one half is going to equal one over eight MVO squared plus E now all you do is subtract this and you're going to get something like one half minus one eighth what was this is going to be um, 4 over 8 minus 1 8, which is uh, 3 over 8. So this is going to turn into 3 over 8 MVO squared is going to equal your E. This is dissipated. So this is how you get how much E was dissipated. Let me just put dissipated here. And that comes from friction and uh, all its little things that it does. But again, remember, uh, it always moves contrary to m velocity, unless you're at the top of a hill, then it goes against the force that you have.